Good evening. And Merry Christmas Eve. It is a pleasure to see all of you here uh, this evening. And we want to welcome you to our Precious Harmony Christmas Eve service. I know there are some of you that are online right now. Um, I'd love to be able to, to see you. Just know that our, our love and our prayers are with you guys. Um, just know that, as I was going to talk about in a couple minutes, that God is with you where you are. And just pray that this service will be as meaningful and as impactful uh, for you there online. So my name is Craig. Uh, again, I want to welcome you all here. Uh, one of the, the goals of tonight, and really all the times when we try to come together, is to carve out what we'll call holy space. It's that set-apart time with God. And as we come into these times together, we may be coming in different states of being. For some of us, it may be a very chaotic, chaotic time given the season that we're in. For others, it's a pretty peaceful time. For some, they're dealing with hardship and grief. For others, they're filled with love and joy and hope. For some, they feel like they're on the verge of losing it. But it's important to understand that Christmas is a gift from God for all of us. So no matter which way we're coming today, that is the gift that we are receiving today. One of the things that we believe as a church is that church is not a building. It's not an organization. It's not a service that we attend. It's a group of people. And this means that, amongst other things, God not locked, really pay attention to is how real God's love is for us. And that he loves you personally. So as we begin, I want to pray some blessings of reflection over all of us. So I'm going to say a phrase, and I'm going to give you some time to reflect. And one of the things that I know is very important, at least in my walk with Jesus, is that it is a big difference to believe that something is true versus believing it is true for me. And so, as I read this, please reflect what is being said. You are truly loved by God. Not only are you truly loved by God, but you are also completely seen and known by him. And for those of us who have made mistakes, who have fallen short, there is grace given to us continually. That peace, hope, and joy are all truly possible for every single one of us with the Lord. And no matter 
your past, your current circumstances. You are welcome in this place and in this church family. John 3, 16 through 18 says, This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son, and this is why. So that no one needed to be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point out, point an accusing finger telling the world how bad it was. He came to help and to put the world right again. So I invite you guys to stand as we're going to enter in a time of singing.
read um, the account of Jesus' birth from Luke 2. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, and that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel and a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace amongst those whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. And at the end of the eight days when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb.
Christmas. And in him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. A question that's been in my head all week, really for the last month, that I'd like to put in your head. How's your life? How's it going? Really? And where is it in your life that you need some light? Or another way to say it is, where's the darkness? Where's the darkness in our world? Where is the darkness in our city? Where is the darkness in this neighborhood? Where is the darkness in your family? And where is the darkness deep down inside of you? And for many of us, we might respond something like, it's everywhere, it's, it's brutal, it's oppressive. But at Christmas, we remember that Jesus came to bring real life and to bring light in to darkness. And he did that by coming down into our world. And that by itself, I think, is a pretty amazing thing. If that's all that we celebrated at Christmas was just the idea that the God who sculpted the mountains and made the oceans and made beautiful blue and brown eyes and made every beautiful sunset and sunrise you've ever seen came down just to be with us. That would be remarkable. When I was a kid, I can remember going to my grandparents' house. And we would go and when we go to my grandparents' house, my great grandfather would be there. And I don't know how exactly old he was, but he seemed like he was ancient. But it was just, it was something cool about the fact that he was there. And he would sit in this one big chair in my grandparents' living room. And he would, when he wasn't sleeping, he would just kind of like look over everyone and smile. And we didn't really interact with him much. There wasn't really much to interact with. I mean, my cousins and I, we were just raiding the snack table and we were ready for our presence and playing with our presence. But just, just the fact that he was there was kind of cool. And if that's all that Christmas was, that would be pretty remarkable. So that God came and spent time with us and even if we didn't interact with him all that much, just that he was able to be there and kind of just the patriarch of this family of humanity that he put together. But the story's better than that. It says that Jesus came into the world. And when he came, we saw this, uh, the Apostle John. So we saw his glory. And that he came full of grace and truth. That when Jesus came, he didn't come just to spend time around us. He came to proclaim to us a message of grace and a message of truth. So where in your life, where in maybe some of the darkness of our world, where is it that we need some grace right now? Where is it that we need a message that we are loved no matter what? That there's nothing that we could ever do that can make God love us less? Maybe some of us today, over this holiday season, maybe for the last year, the last couple of years, maybe we've been pretty rough on ourselves. And we need to give ourselves and we need a message of grace. Uh, maybe some of us have been putting this immense amount of pressure on ourselves. Like we've been, the whole weight of the world is on our shoulders trying to achieve some Pinterest version of perfection and we're tired and we're exhausted and we need some grace maybe there's some relationships in our lives that have 
drifted or broken. And especially at Christmas, we are keenly aware and we need some grace. And the God of the universe came proclaiming a message of grace. And he came to bring a message of truth. And by truth, he didn't come to bring a waving finger. He came because there's some lies that we can so easily believe that he wanted to make sure we're exposed to the truth. And some of us, as we come into this holiday season, we need to hear a message of truth. Because maybe we've been believing some lie that there's somehow there's some amount of stuff, there's some amount of money that will eventually make us happy and bring us peace. And Jesus came to bring us a message of contentment, of generosity, of truth. Maybe some of us, we've been holding on to some sort of grudge, some sort of bitterness. Like Anne Lamott says, uh, unforgiveness is like drinking rat poison and then hoping that the rat dies. And Jesus came with the message of truth that we need to stop drinking the poison. It's toxic in our life. And we need to embrace a message of forgiveness. Some of us have just been running and running and running and we are so busy and we are so tired and we are so sleep deprived. And we need to hear a message of truth. Some of us have believed some terrible lie that we are worthless, that our shame defines us. And Jesus came to give us a message of truth. But the great thing about Christmas and the great thing about Jesus is that Jesus didn't come to shove that message down our throat. He came in complete humility to give us an invitation. And here's that invitation. Uh, I can skip to John 3, 16, he said, For God so loved this world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him as in puts their trust in him as in decides that they're going to make him king of their life shall not perish but will have eternal life starting right now and going forever for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. The weird thing, people love darkness. We don't want to be exposed. There's something about that message of grace and truth. And instead of light, it's because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil, they hate the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth, the truth that exposes the lies, comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God, who loves you, who loves you, who loves you. So we're going to embark in one of my favorite traditions of the whole year, that as we sing, we're going to pass light of candles from one person to the other. And if you want, it can be a nice Christmas tradition as the room fills with even more light, take some pictures, it'll be beautiful. But if you want, I invite you to something a little bit deeper. Because I think there's something in every single one of us, something in the, the life that we have been living, 
that is in desperate need of some grace and some truth. And Jesus came into the world to give it. And he started 2,000 years ago, and he's been speaking it and speaking it and speaking it ever since. And so as you see your candle white, I invite you to invite an even deeper light into your light, into your life, as we sing. Thank you. 
taught us to love one another. The gospel is love and peace. Help it to sink into our hearts deep. Help us to live lives following after you, trusting after you, believing after you. Because I believe that this light can change the world. It's been changing the world for 2,000 years. And the darkness, as dark as it may seem sometimes, it will not overcome the light. The light of love and peace and justice and hope that you have put in each and every one of us. Through your son, through you, through your spirit. Amen. Like Craig said at the beginning, uh, we don't keep uh, God locked up in these walls all week long. God is every single place we go. And so as a way for us to remember that, uh, we let our lights keep shining uh, as we leave Christmas Eve service. So in the two corners, uh, there's some boards and you can carefully take your candle and put it inside the board. And after that, you can keep mingling, spend time with a church family. And then whenever you're ready, you can head out and enjoy the rest of uh, what you have prepared for Christmas Eve. And as you go, know that the light is shining, the light of grace and truth of love. We love you. Jesus loves you. And there's just so much good. Let's walk in it. Love you guys. Merry Christmas.